Often we hear stories in sports of incredible comebacks, the team or a player that just wouldn't quit despite the odds. Tonight we have a story that goes even deeper and much more meaningful. Fox 45's James Ryder here now, and James, this story is remarkable. Yeah, Adam, in sports we often use numbers to judge a player, a team, or a coach. Like Franklin Monroe standout Ethan Conley, averaging 22 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. But the number that means the most to this amazing junior is 33. And to see him do some of the things that he's doing now, um, we just give the glory to God because it's, uh, it's a miracle that he's able to play basketball. When he was eight years old, Ethan Conley and his family were on their way home from watching a Wright State basketball game. And they had no idea that in just a few days, their lives would change forever. It was a really good game, exciting. And we went home and my stomach it just didn't feel right. It was something that I'd never experienced before and I was scared, you know, an eight-year-old experiencing this kind of pain. Ethan spent most of the weekend in bed with what his family assumed was the flu and he stayed home from school on Monday. Come Monday afternoon, I uh, said, Ethan, you're going to have to get up and walk around a little bit. And he said, Mom, I can't walk. Felt like there was knives just stabbing at my legs. Little by little that evening, his legs started, the pain started to get worse and worse. I just remember I was screaming. That's all I could do because the pain was so great. And I couldn't do anything to calm him down and I knew something was wrong. And that was kind of the start of our nightmare. Javen had to carry his son to the car as the Connellys quickly rushed to the hospital. When the doctor called my name out, I decided to get up. And when I got up, I collapsed through the floor. I couldn't walk at all. Ethan was quickly admitted. This isn't working. He's in excruciating pain. You know, something else is going on. Things continued to get worse for Ethan. He was diagnosed with a rare virus that was attacking his muscles. His legs were swollen to twice the normal size, and the damage done to his muscles caused his bloodstream to be flooded with an enzyme called CPK, normal levels of which are below 200. He was admitted his CPK level was 2,000. By the end of that day, it was 50,000, and then as each day went along, it was in the hundreds of thousands. It topped out at almost 700,000. According to the family, that's the highest level ever recorded. Ethan was being poisoned from the inside out, his kidneys failing, and was placed on advanced life support. When his blood pressure dropped and all the nurses came floating into his room, I just felt like that was it. I specifically remember looking at Javen and saying, I can't live without him. He has to make it. The family felt hopeless as the doctors worked tirelessly to care for Ethan. There was just no, there was no other documented case anywhere in the world that anyone had survived this kind of um, virus. You just pray that all those machines keep working. I can just remember the sounds every single beat that I just would pray, just keep working, just keep working. Doctors said if Ethan did survive, he could have to have his legs amputated, need a kidney transplant, and possibly be on dialysis the rest of his life. If he has to have a leg or both legs amputated or he has to be on dialysis, that's fine, you know, we'll deal with that. We can get through those things, but we just want our son. After numerous scares that the end may be near, Ethan began to recover and his condition improved. It was a good two weeks, maybe three, before we really had any kind of indication that he was pulling out of this. Still bedridden in the hospital, Ethan's sister Karina was celebrating a birthday and Ethan came up with the best present he could think of as the family held a party in his room. Ethan says, Mom, I'm going to walk for Karina's birthday today. And I said, oh, honey, that's really sweet of you. But, you know, it's OK. You know, I know it's OK. That was just the biggest moment. He had just overcome so much in that moment. And he was just proving that he was going to continue to overcome. Ethan's done just that. Not only does he still have both of his legs and his health, but he's the star player on Franklin Monroe's basketball team 
and has already surpassed 1,000 career points as a junior. It kind of gives us a purpose to play for. Like, we're not just playing to win, we're, we're playing for him because, I mean, he shouldn't be here and we're all lucky enough that he is here. Eight years later, Ethan is still an inspiration and a constant reminder of overcoming all odds. Every day I wake up, every day I go to bed, I think about it. I think about how different our world would have been if God had not, had not saved him. It's honestly every day when I walk through those doors and I see him, I just think about how much we take for granted. I always think about it daily. That's why I always want to go out on the court. I want to give it all that I have because you never know when your last breath could be. I tell you this much, James, there's not a day that goes by that I don't thank God for healing him. It's changed our lives because now we are able to put things in perspective. On the court, Ethan wears the number 33 for the number of days he spent in the hospital. It also symbolizes what God has done in my life. Ethan shares his story to also share his faith and hopes that his number 33 and his life stand for so much more than meets the eye. Every move that I make, it's a miracle because I shouldn't have my legs right now. They should be amputated. I shouldn't have my life. Ethan is being recruited by Division II colleges right now and is on the radar and has the potential to end up as a Division I player when it's all said and done. Now, whether it's on the court or off of it, Ethan Conley is a very impressive young man.